Shalom Aleichem everyone, hope everyone is very, very well. Today, Thursday, Erev Shabbos, Kodesh, Parshas, Vayakal, Pekude. And this is our last days of regular learning in Yeshiva for this man. Next week, we take the boys on Yam Liyam. And we are finishing a Baruch Hashem, wonderful, wonderful Kaidzman, getting geared up for Chag Pesach and what hopes to be an excellent and actually longer than usual Kaidzman. So um, I wanted to share with you a very short but sweet idea. The Torah tells us, we read about the building of the Mishkan in this week's Parsha, and the Torah tells us in Perek Lamed Hey, Pasuk Lamed, Vayor Moshe Bnei Yisrael, Ru'u, Uri Ben Chur, Lemata Yehuda, that Hashem gave a certain Chachma to Bitzalel Ben Uri Ben Chur, gave me Ruach Elokim, a Chachma, a Tfuna, a Das, Bekol Melacha, who's a tremendous artist and had tremendous wisdom, and he's going to be the one who is going to be endowed with the Koach and the power to both establish the spiritual beauty, the physical beauty, the splendor, the majesty of the Mishkan. The Medrash, right over here, Medrash Rabbi, Al here is referred to as Betzalel, Ben Uri, Ben Chur. And we mention a few generations back, not just Betzal ben Uri, who his father was, but we mention his grandfather. And says the Medrash, Ma rola hazker kan chur. Why are you mentioning chur? Usually we name people Betzal ben Uri. End of story. So why is it that chur gets a mention over here? So b'shal shebikshu Yisrael la'avod avodas kochavim. When the Jewish people wanted to go ahead and build the Egel Hazov, nosa nafsho ala kodesh baruch v'lo hinichan. So Chur, the Zaidi of Betzalel, stood up, fought against this movement of Bnei Yisrael to build an Egel Hazov. He fought against it and he had to give up. He, the cost of that Macha'ah, the cost of that protest, was Amdu, the Jewish people got up, Ve'harguhu. And they murdered him. They murdered Chur. He was Mose Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem. So Amalau HaKadosh Baruch Hashem says to Chur, I'm certainly going to pay you back for your mysterious nefesh for me. And the Gemad just brings a mashal. Mashal a melech shemaradu alav ligion osav. So you had a king whose legions started to rebel against him and his sar tzava stood up. Amat sar tzava shalom v'nil chami mahem amalo al hamelech atem mordim. So the Sar Tzava, the general of the king, got up and protested, fought back, and they killed him. So the Melech says, Ilu mamo nosanli. If the Sar Tzava that defended my honor, if he just did so by spending money, lo ha'iti tzarich lefralo, would I not have to pay him back for his expenses? So he gave up his life. Certainly, 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 I have to go ahead and give pay back, pay in kind, and <clears throat> and the Medrash goes on to say the types of payment that the king would give to the family of this general who stood up on his behalf. So the Medrash continues and says that's exactly why Chur is mentioned over here. It's not just Betzal ben Uri, but Betzal ben Uri ben Chur. And the message is that Chur did something that was, on the one hand, perhaps Silly. He's standing up against a mob. What's the point? Is he ever going to defeat this mob that wants to go ahead and build this Egel Hazav? Is it going to work? And not only that, not only was it likely not to be successful, but yes, the cost that he was going to pay was so, so dire, so severe, he's paying with his life. Nevertheless, <clears throat> the Torah tells us that Hur got his reward, if you will. Hur got what he deserved, but it takes time. It didn't happen in the next generation. Uri? We don't know much about Uri. Who is this Uri? That we don't know. It skipped the generation. But Hur had tremendous, tremendous greatness in him. And my friend likes to say, greatness sometimes is a recessive gene. Sometimes you don't see it immediately. It might take a generation or two before it emerges. But the reason the Pasuk mentions Betzalo ben Uri ben Hur is because Betzala was Zoha to this Chachma, to this unique wisdom and this unique schus of being the one who had that Chachma slave to build the Mishkan that came because of the mysterious Nefesh of Chor. And in a real sense, many of the Rishon write 
that the Mishkan is the Tikkun for the Egel Hazov. Is the, if you will, when the, the Shekhinah comes back at the end of this week's parasha, we come full circle and we re-emerge from the, the depths of Chet, that was the Egel Hazov, and now once again there is a Hashra Sashkina. It started with the Macha of Chur. The seeds were planted and it will emerge into a tremendous, tremendous blossoming in the handiwork of B'Tzalel. There's a, Stephen Covey writes about the Ch- Chinese bamboo tree. Unbelievable tree. Chinese bamboo tree, you plant it in year one, you water it, you give it sunlight, you nurture it, it grows a half an inch. More of the same in year two, another half an inch. Year three, same thing, grows a little bit more. Finally, in year five, the Chinese bamboo tree grows 50 feet. It takes a while. You plant, you nurture, sometimes you don't see right away, but eventually that gadula, that greatness emerges. That's a very, very important lesson because I see it all the time. I see it in yeshiva all the time. Sometimes you'll see a boy who's struggling in his learning, struggling over the Gemara, struggling in his davening. He's working, he's trying, and he doesn't see the results. And sometimes he'll get frustrated. Sometimes he'll, like, is all the toil, is it really worth it? And then sometimes, often, you'll see that there's this moment, what I call the breakthrough moment, where finally, like, we don't just jump another step, but then it's like an exponential jump. It's that 50 feet of that Chinese bamboo tree. Sometimes it skips a generation. You don't see it right away. It, you don't see it in Uri, but it emerges in Bitsala. It does take time. Sometimes we'll even see it two, three years down the line. Sometimes parents have this struggle. They're giving to their children. They're nurturing. They're trying to help them. And it seems like a bracha lavatala. Children have different agendas. Teenagers, different agendas. All of that pouring my heart and soul into this child. And it seems like it's not accomplishing anything. Again, my personal experience in raising my own family and certainly observing so many of our, of our children, of our youth, is that there's no such thing as a sweat of a parent levatala. There's no such thing as a tefila levatala. You keep at it, you keep nurturing, you might not see it right away. It might only be another half an inch, another half an inch, it might even be a half an inch backwards at certain points in time. But eventually that recessive gene emerges and you see a blossoming bamboo tree. So that's the message, perhaps, of B'Tzalel, Ben Uri, Ben Chur. We should all be Zoha to build our own Mishkanos in our bias. Our bias should be a Migdash Ma'at and a Mir Tashem, see tremendous, tremendous Nachas from our children.